Welcome to the World Day of Prayer 2021, prepared by the Christian Women of the Republic of Vanuatu and adapted by the Women's Interchurch Council of Canada. I am Dr. Anita Giddens, WIC board treasurer from Toronto, Ontario. Our French voice for this service is Lise Govan, Ottawa WIC president. A bilingual script of today's World Day of Prayer video service can be found on the WIC website. Welcome to our sisters and brothers around the world, in the name of Jesus. Je m'appelle Lise Gauvin, présidente du Conseil écuménique des chrétiennes d'Ottawa, en Ontario. Au nom de Jésus, bienvenue à nos sœurs et frères du monde entier. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging gaze. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found trust in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand The world has experienced many changes since we met for World Day of Prayer last year. We are pleased that you are joining us by video as we gather with people from across Canada in a different but meaningful way this year. Using technology, we can include some special guests. Thanks to Jellyanne Lee from New Brunswick for her creative processional dance at the beginning. At this time, we are delighted to share a message from Cindy Vanu Aroro, the World Day of Prayer Secretary in Vanuatu. Hello, my name is Catherine McKeel, and I'm the Executive Director for the Women's Inner Church Council of Canada, home of the World Day of Prayer in Canada. I am really excited to connect by internet with Cindy, the Secretary of the Vanuatu World Day of Prayer Committee. This is a volunteer group under the umbrella of the Vanuatu Council of Churches. Cindy would like to share a greeting with all of us celebrating the World Day of Prayer around the globe. I just like to say hello from Vanuatu. That's our language of greetings in Vanuatu. Hello to all of you, our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Looking forward to praying with us 2021 World Day of Prayer as the writer country. Uh, hello to you all. What is the top prayer concern for your country, Vanuatu, at this time? Top uh, prayer concerns for our country now is uh, what we are going through with uh, this uh, COVID-19 issue. It's affecting the economy of the country very much. The, the finance uh, department of the government is looking very seriously at how to um, maintain the country uh, as we continue to uh, go through the state of emergency 
periods and it's going to be lengthened uh, uh, because our neighboring countries are rising with the cases of COVID-19. So that's one of our top prayer matters. I know that it's, uh, this uh, uh, COVID-19 is affecting the whole world, uh, but this is one of our prayers. So as we pray for you, and we would like you to pray for us too, yeah. And one other prayer matter is uh, uh, that we are still recovering from uh, the cyclone, uh, TC uh, Harold. There was a category five that devastated all the Northern Islands of Vanuatu very much. So people are still recovering from that. Uh, but uh, while I'm saying that, I just want to thank uh, every uh, our friends and families and the neighboring countries who are partners of Vanuatu who gave so much to the relief supplies to help the people immediately after the cyclone. We are going through a lot of issues, social issues in Vanuatu these days, um, different things that are affecting um, children, men and women alike. So that's one of the like issues like uh, suicide is coming up, murder, and uh, domestic violence is still one of the things we are fighting in Vanuatu. So. Those are some of our prayers. And we would like everyone to pray for people in Vanuatu to, to like our, our theme says, to be rooted in Christ, um, strong in uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and the people in the church to continue witnessing, telling you about the good news of Christ, that we will continue to stand firm in, the, in our Lord. What is the best part about being the host country for the World Day of Prayer 2021? Just being uh, given the great opportunity to be the right the country, it's, it's one of the overwhelming things for us in Vanuatu. We just praise God and thank God for that. The opportunity to be the right the country. Uh, it's like, like um, our tourism sector putting Vanuatu in the world. The theme of uh, the World Day of Prayer is uh, one of the touching, inspiring things for us as well. Uh, building uh, on a strong foundation. I mean, and uh, telling the world about uh, what we do in Vanuatu culturally, in our tradition and customs, and uh, uh, our religious aspect of life in Vanuatu. Who are the people in Vanuatu living in Vanuatu? Our friendly islands, yeah. And uh, uh, we know that Vanuatu has been uh, pray, uh, categorized as. Uh, the happiest place to live in Vanuatu and tell the world about that. Yes, although we have things happening, but we still, I think we're still the happiest place to live in yet. It's great to meet you. Bless you. Please give our greetings to your World Day of Prayer team and the writing committee in Vanuatu. Thank okay. you very much. And I wish you all the best as well. And, and uh, thank you for praying with us for Vanuatu. Thank you, Cindy and Kath, for bringing us that important greeting. Let us now learn a bit more about our 2021 country. Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up, is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Ni Vanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. 
The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income earning activity is Nagol which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9 percent of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youths to white-collar jobs. In the current Vanuatu democracy, the Constitution provides for gender equity but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. I'm Kayla Ginter, World Day of Prayer participant from the town of Ajax, Ontario, and I will be leading the call to worship. Come let us read together the words of worship as found in the first verse of Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, those who guard it keep watch in vain. Let's respond together by saying, Happy is everyone who trusts in the house builder God. Let us be one of those. Amen. We're now pleased to have members of the First Baptist Sanctuary Choir from Mountain, New Brunswick, lead us in the hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Please sing as you are able.
you to the choir for sharing with us in such a beautiful way while following the social distance guidelines in your area. Let us be thankful for the great things God has done, and let us pray. Holy, 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 God, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. God is present in the history of all people from yesterday to today. Loving God on whom Vanuatu stands, we adore you. Thank you for the fellowship with each other and with sisters and brothers around the world gathered for the World Day of Prayer. Thank you for the great and wonderful things in our lives and in our nations. You grant us authority, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to care over all beautiful islands and countries. Thank you for the fertile lands, for the fresh air, clean environment, beautiful sunshine, blue seas, and still waters of Vanuatu Islands. Thank you for the sweet melody of the birds, the sound of the land animals, and the mystery of the fish in the sea and rivers. Thank you for the waterfalls that rain down their waters and serenely declare to us your greatness and power. Thank you for the sound of children singing, laughing, shouting, and for the prayers and the songs of the old and young, all of which manifest the joy of your love. Amen. Let's respond together by saying, Praises, glory, and honor be unto you alone forever. God, receive our praise. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, ask us to confess to God, who is faithful and just and will forgive us. Let us confess in prayer. God, we stand before your house of grace to confess our sins. We confess that we have listened to your word, but have not acted on it. Often we do the things we ought not to do and leave undone the things we ought to do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We try to build our homes thinking we're building on the words of Jesus Christ, but we have actually built on the sand. We want to be changed, restore us back to do what is right and just. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the sea creatures by throwing garbage into their habitats. We have endangered marine life and ruined sustainable livelihoods. We know we can change. We confess regret and commit to fulfill the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. Let's respond together by saying, God, hear our prayers. Rejoice and be glad. Our God is full of mercy and abounding in steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. God is looking for a house in which to live. In Isaiah 66, verses 1 to 2, God asks, What is the house you would build for me? Let us pray. God, we come humbly before you, and pray that you grant us your spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth, lead and guide us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Humbly, we offer ourselves to be a house where you can dwell. By the power of your word, transform our lives and our nations. Make us a household of justice and peace. Amen. Seigneur, nous voici humblement devant toi et prions pour que tu nous accordes ton esprit de sagesse et de connaissance. Apprends-nous à discerner la vérité. Conduis-nous et guide-nous pour vivre d'une manière qui te plaît et qui te convient. Humblement, nous nous proposons d'être une maison où tu peux habiter. Par le pouvoir de ta parole, transforme nos vies et nos nations. Fais de nous une maison de justice et de paix. Let's respond together by saying, Gracious God, accept our commitment. Reverend Stephanie McClellan, the WIC president from Lewisport, Newfoundland, will now share a children's moment with us. Oh, great, you made it. I'm just putting the final touches on the roof of this house that I've built. 
I'm Reverend Steph, and I'm pleased to be here as the president of the Women's Interchurch Council. I just love celebrating World Day of Prayer with people all over the world. As I put the roof on this house, you'll see that I've built it on a very strong foundation because the women of Vanuatu want to remind us that we need to build a house on the solid rock so that it can stand up to the storms of life. And boy, do they get storms, hurricanes even. Their houses have to be strong. And so I've built this house on a rock, just like Jesus tells us to. Wise people build their house on a rock, for it will stand strong in the storm. This is a special rock. Because the women of Vanuatu didn't just want us to think about building houses. They wanted us to think about building our lives on a strong foundation. And so this rock that I've used to build this house is a heart-shaped rock. It reminds me that my life is built on the foundation of God's love. And if I can be built on the foundation of God's love... I'll always know that nothing, no storms can bring me down. When those storms hit and I feel most alone or something happens that I can't control, then life might feel like it's falling apart because I don't have anyone to hold it all together with me. But the women from Vanuatu, they want us to be wise, knowing if we build on the strong foundation of the love of God, we will be able to be strong and share that strength with others when the storms hit. And that's a strong foundation for this World Day of Prayer. If we're all sharing the love of God together, we have much to sing about. And I invite you to join with my Sunday School as we sing and sign Halle, Halle, Halle. <laughs> Stephanie for sharing with us that fun children's moment. We will now hear three stories by women from Vanuatu. I'm Mary Nordic, the World Day of Prayer Liaison for Canada from Saskatoon. Let us first listen to Ratoya's words. I am the second child from a family of eight. I left school at the end of year six as there was no money to continue my education. My family could only afford to educate my older brother and not me, as I am the second born and a girl. One day, I heard there was a sewing class for girls at a local center. I applied and was accepted, but my dad had no money to pay the fees. I was disheartened, but I did not have my own money to finance my studies. I sincerely desired to enhance my education, but there was no opportunity in a formal school system. Then I turned my attention to the church to fill my desire to learn. I joined the youth group, attended Bible studies, and later got involved with the women's ministry. With this determination and faith in God, I found ways to educate myself and even acquired skills to earn a living to provide for my family. I now make items and sell them at the mama's market where other women like me with little education can earn a living with this new skill. I care for my family with whom God blessed me. My husband and I have three children. I praise God for the blessings over my life. 
I thank God for being the source of my strength and for helping me put into practice what I have learned. I have become strong and wise in the Lord. I am Diane Dwarka, past president of the WIC board from Winnipeg, Manitoba. In Vanuatu, many children in the rural areas walk long distances to go to school. Some even must leave home and attend boarding school at a very young age. Education for all is not mandatory. The school system is either French or English. Bislama is a learned language to overcome communication barriers in towns. In rural areas, unique languages are spoken in individual villages. Equal access of boys and girls attending school is still in progress. I am Megumi Matsu Saunders, former WIC president from Victoria, BC. Let us listen now to more these words. My little brother and I grew up in a single parent home. When my mother remarried, she left us with our grandparents. After my dad remarried, he took us to live with his new family. When our stepmother gave birth to her children, her attitude towards us changed altogether. With more children to feed and no room in the house for all the children, I had to find my own food in the street and slept outside the house in a shack. I used an old copra sack as a blanket to protect me from the cold. Somehow, I met some Christians who told me that God loved me. I could not understand this kind of love in the midst of my suffering, but I decided to trust. I trusted that God would take care of me, even though my family was not sheltering me. This trust grew inside me and became the foundation of my life. I'm strong in my Christian faith and share my story with others that we should trust in God and God's provisions. Today, I pray for those children who, like me, grew up almost by themselves. We know that God loves them and we pray that the home for children may be provided in every country around the world. Vanuatu's population growth is one of the highest in the Pacific region. Malnutrition is a concern in both rural and urban areas. Although the tradition of growing organic staples in gardens is strong, the food industries of powdered milk and unhealthy processed products are getting access to babies and children. I will be sharing our third and final story from a Vanuatuan woman, Jacqueline. Here are her words. I come from a rural village. Ever since I was a young girl, I dreamt of working in tourism in Port Vila. I traveled to Port Vila to get a job in hospitality, but I don't have the training to get the job I dream of. I have no family here, so I am living on the outskirts of the city. I have no money for proper accommodation, food, or even to return to my village. I know that this is not the plan God has for me. 
but I don't know what to do. I pray that rural areas of Vanuatu be valued and young people find the opportunities to search for in their own communities. I trust that God will provide for young people to grow and contribute to the well-being of Vanuatu. With 75% of the population in rural areas with little employment options, young people must migrate to areas with economic opportunities. They come with minimal education and no trained skill to enable them to gain employment in the city. High unemployment amongst young people creates a generation that sees no future, which is a great loss for the country. There is a need for policies and programs for the betterment of rural areas so young people can stay in these communities to be educated and have jobs. Thank you, readers, for sharing these important stories. Let us now hear the word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. Écoutons la parole de Dieu tirée de l'Évangile de Matthieu, chapitre 7, verset 24 à 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. Si, celui qui entend les paroles que je dis là et les met en pratique, est comparable à un homme prévoyant qui a construit sa maison sur le roc. La pluie est tombée, les torrents ont dévalé, les vents ont soufflé et se sont abattus sur cette maison. La maison ne s'est pas écroulée car elle était fondée sur le roc. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Celui qui entend de moi ces paroles sans les mettre en pratique est comparable à un homme insensé qui a construit sa maison sur le sable. La pluie est tombée, les torrents ont dévalé, les vents ont soufflé, ils sont venus battre cette maison. La maison s'est écroulée et son écroulement a été complet. The main Bible text for the Vanuatu program comes from the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, found in the book of Matthew, chapters 5 to 7. Jesus is concerned about the hungry and thirsty crowd that went to the mountain and heard the word of God to live better lives. It gives context to what Jesus says about his words being heard and acted upon in chapter 7, verse 24. It is not an empty instruction. Behind it is the full understanding of Jesus' ministry and the kingdom of heaven. All the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount deliberate on two verbs, to hear and to act. The results that will come depend on the choices that are made and the actions taken. Jesus' closing words for his teaching on the mountain is a story of comparison. The wise builder is safe while the foolish one loses his house. The wise act on Jesus' words while the foolish do not. Let us consider this carefully prior to making our own decisions in life. Let us now reflect on three questions for a moment. One. The crowds are astounded at Jesus' teaching. How did Jesus' words speak to you? 2. Can you describe a situation when you heard and acted upon Jesus' words? 3. How can one demonstrate wisdom in the community? You can now take a moment to pause the video to reflect on some of these questions.
Let us rise and build our homes, our nations, and the world on the words of Jesus, who reminded us about the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. Major Shirley King of Toronto, WIC board appointee from the Salvation Army of Canada, will now share her devotional message. Do you remember as a child in Sunday school singing the fun chorus that says, The wise man built his house upon the rock. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. Then we would follow with the refrain, The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the house on the sand went flop. I remember learning at a very early age the truth that the Lord Jesus is the rock, the solid rock. He is the foundation of all Christian living. He is our friend and our example for living. And it is in him we find our hope. I'm Major Shirley King from the Salvation Army, and I serve as the Divisional Secretary for Women's Ministries in the Ontario Division. I'm thrilled to serve WIC as the Secretary of the Board, and I'm so pleased to join the women of Vanuatu as we consider their message of building on a strong foundation. Now, I admit to you that I am no builder, and in fact, I know very little about building physical structures. One might say, I can barely hammer a nail straight. One thing I have learned is that constructing anything, whether it be a layered cake or a Lego creation from blocks, developing new friendships, or creating any piece of work, I need to start with a good foundation. Once the foundation is laid and the supports are in place, then the remainder of the process of creating can be strategically carried out with a fair amount of ease, so that in the end, there is a feeling of complete satisfaction. These verses about the wise and foolish builders taught by Jesus and chosen as the theme by the women of Vanuatu are instructions for practical, wholesome, and holy living. In this nugget of a parable about the wise and foolish builders, Jesus uses the imagery of rock and sand and describes the tragedy and triumph of building a life from two very different perspectives. He clearly teaches us to build our lives on a solid foundation, to build on things that matter and make a difference. A firm foundation will hold together when the storms of life come beating all around you. He is saying to his listeners, be wise builders of your life, and he provides direction for how we are to be in relationship with others, to live at peace with ourselves, and to be in fellowship with the Lord our God. I love the response of the people as we read from the message paraphrase of this account, where we are told, when Jesus concluded his address, the crowd burst into applause, and it was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. This was the best teaching they had ever heard. This is the good news they needed to hear. This is the good news we need to hear. This is the news that fills us up, sends us out, and moves us into action. So as the crowd of people heard Jesus that day and were moved by his teachings, we can also be moved by his message for us. Allow me to share with you what has resonated with me as I have considered this scripture. In building a firm foundation for our lives, we must survey wisely and make good choices. In this parable, there are two people. They had the same intent. They wanted to build a house. Their responses were different. The outcome of their choices was very different. When the storms came, the house on the rock stood firm while the house on the sand collapsed. There was no substance to hold it in place. It was a dangerous construct from the beginning 
there was no foundation. In the building of a firm foundation for our lives, we must dig deeply. I'd like to suggest two components of digging deeply that make for a secure foundation. First of all, be in fellowship with the Lord your God through Jesus. Go deep in your prayer life. Seek the heart of God. Allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Go deep in your study of Scripture. It is the living Word of God. It is nourishment for the soul. It will make you strong. Go deep in your exercise of faith. And go deep in your service to others. Secondly, live at peace with each other. Being kind and living in simplicity is so important as we reflect the love of Jesus. As we are building the solid foundation, we must be mindful of storms. I believe Jesus would also have us hear that storms will come, so be sure you have built on a solid foundation. These are foundational words, words to build a life on. I am mindful of the reality of our friends in Vanuatu who know far too well the impact of storms. Coastal areas that are suddenly engulfed by devastating wind, destructive waves, and torrential rain. In preparation for these forecasted storms, individuals do all they can to protect their homes in the time of storm. Every precautionary measure taken in planning and executing the plan for a firm foundation will protect in the day of trouble. So too, when storms approach in our personal lives, we need to be prepared. And now when I hear the childhood song about the wise man and the foolish man, the rock and the sand, the rains and the floods, I am much more aware of the truths of surveying wisely and making good choices, digging deeply and being prepared for the storms that will inevitably come our way. So in this hope, we rejoice today and sing with the psalmist in Psalm 62, He solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul. I'm set for life. He is the solid rock. He is the firm foundation. Thank you, Shirley, for your inspiring message. The World Day of Prayer is a worldwide ecumenical movement led by women. Each year we admire the strengths of the communities who participate, we empathize with their cares, we are encouraged by their faith, and we stand in solidarity with each other through our prayers and actions. In Canada, under the leadership of WIC, your offering funds World Day of Prayer, as well as grants for projects to restore hope to women touched by injustice. A list of the grant projects for 2019 and 2020 can be found on our website. WIC .org. In 2020, WIC distributed 100,000 for grant projects across Canada and internationally. Your donations make it possible to respond to many needs in the midst of COVID-19 regulations. Support was given to women and children affected by domestic abuse, poverty, food shortages, human trafficking, and racism. I would love to highlight a couple of grant stories. The Kijiji Cha Upendo Children's Project is giving hope and new life to the orphaned and vulnerable children in the Kibera slums in Kenya. These children become part of a family in a network of caregivers that receive livelihood training, mentorship, and support to develop home-based enterprises. Support during COVID-19 ensures that caregiver families can continue to feed their families and prevent the spread of the virus within their households and community. Another World Day of Prayer grant was awarded to the Hope Resource Center in Alberta. This is one of the organizations that responds to gender-based violence in a rural and remote community. Unfortunately, domestic violence is one of the areas that has increased need during COVID-19. Your financial support helps stop the transmission of violence and gives hope for healthy relationships. The World Day of Prayer motto is informed prayer and prayerful action. With your support, we can continue to pursue peace, reconciliation and healing in many areas of social injustice. Life has been challenging for all of us during COVID-19, but especially for those already struggling with poverty and domestic violence. Please give generously online by using the donate page on our website or mail a check to the WIC office. You can also text your donation with your phone. See details on the screen during the offertory.
Thank you. What does the Lord require of you? 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 to the members of the First Baptist Sanctuary Choir in Mountain for sharing your gift of music. Let us now offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Glorious God, we thank you and worship you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us, for family and friends, home, food, and water. We praise you for leading us to be creative and able to support our families. We offer to you a small portion of these blessings of money and service. We dedicate them to the World Day of Prayer that will share these gifts with the communities in need here and around the world. Amen. Dieu gracieux, nous te remercions et nous t'adorons pour toutes les bénédictions que tu nous as accordées. Pour la famille et les amis, la maison, la nourriture et l'eau, nous te félicitons de nous avoir conduits à être créatifs et capables de soutenir nos familles. Nous t'offrons une petite partie de ces bénédictions d'argent et de services. Nous les dédions à la Journée mondiale de prière qui partagera ses dons avec les communautés dans le besoin ici et ailleurs dans le monde. Amen. Hi, I'm Reverend Shirley de Merchant. I'm a former president of the board of the Women's Inter-Church Council of Canada, and I live in Woodstock, New Brunswick. It's my privilege to lead us in prayer in this part of our World Day Prayer Service. I'd like to begin by reading the prayers written by the women of Vanuatu, and I'll ask if you would participate by responding two times by the words that will appear on your screen. Then I'll pray for some concerns here in Canada, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. When we go to prayer, let's remember that God not only delights in hearing our prayers, he delights in answering our prayers. So as we go to prayer, let us pray in faith. Let us now be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. Everlasting God, the God on whom Vanuatu stands, we ask you to help us stand for peace in all nations and in all families. We commit the leaders and people of Vanuatu into your wise hands. We want to stand against the forces of injustice present in our nations. 
Give us this authority over our islands and nations. We pray that we can live in unity, love, and peace in the context of ethnic and cultural diversity like Vanuatu and so many other places around the world. We are grateful for any positive community building that resulted from COVID-19. Please respond, if you would, with these words, bind us together in love, peace, and joy. We remember people living in places prone to natural disasters and the hazards of cyclones, hurricanes, volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis, and those experiencing food shortages and famine. We lift up our concerns for those who suffer internal anguish from substance addictions and loneliness. We pray for victims of domestic and gender-based violence and other forms of marginalization. Please respond by saying these words, Almighty God, protect communities from disasters and suffering, heal the souls of the people and let them feel your love. Let us pray now for some of the concerns here in this country. Lord, we pray for those whose livelihoods are severely impacted because of COVID-19, particularly women who are disproportionately affected by job loss. We pray that you will provide for the needs of these women and their families, and that you would open new opportunities for them to use their skills to earn an income. We bring before you caregivers who put their own health and the health of their own families at risk by going to work each day to care for loved ones of other families. We ask that you would place a shield of protection around them and keep them safe from harm. We pray for victims of intimate partner and family abuse whose lives are in greater danger because of the isolation from coworkers and friends and the lack of privacy in their own homes. We express our hope in you and our commitment to participate in your purposes for the world as we unite our hearts and voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, is a favorite for many of us. Please sing as you are able.
We welcome God's dwelling presence in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you, and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your house as it is in heaven. Remember as you go out, everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person and the house will withstand the floods. Go and build your house on Jesus' words. Go home with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Let's respond together by saying, This is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. When I rise and be on the strong foundation, Vanuatu arise and build on the strong foundation now. Vanuatu arise.